and welcome to part eight of the order block strategy. Now, this is when the fun begins because we're going to talk about entries. So entries, there's two types of entries. We've got risk entries and we've got confirmation entries, right? They're going to be split into two different videos. So part eight and part nine, one is going to be, um, one is going to be risk entries and one is going to be confirmation entries. But in this video, we're going to talk about how to actually use the OB for entries. So we already identified how to find the OBs, right? So how do you actually enter? So say that we've got the OB, um, why is it like that? Okay, say you've got the OB sitting here, okay? Um, let me draw the wicks. And there. Okay, so in order to actually enter um, from an OB, you have two points, okay? First point is you can use the open, which is from here, as your entry. So this is entry one. Sorry, there we go. So entry one. Alternatively, what you can do is you can get your Fibonacci tool and you can use the 50% of the OB as your entry two. Two. There we go. So when we talk about um, entries in the next two videos, this is where you're going to place your orders. You're either going to place your order at the entry number one or entry two. Okay, that is up to you. So generally, we like to have a five pip stop loss max, but it's up to you what you feel comfortable using. Okay, as your max stop loss. For me, it's five pips. So say, for example, if the entry gives me five pip stop loss or less, then I always use the entry. If it doesn't, then I always use entry number two and use 50%. If you use the 50%, you are less you are less probable to actually trigger the trade, but it does give you a best, it does give you a better risk to reward. So just bear that in mind. That's the only reason why you use zero, um, the 50% of the OB. Ideally, I would use the open if um, if I were you. Um, you know, you get the best, not the best, but you get the higher probabilities for the trade to actually trigger. I don't know why they're all over there. Okay, that's it. Okay, in terms of entries, that's it. You need to place your order here, or you're going to place your order at the entry number two at the 50%. Now, remember when I said is you can sometimes get liquidity wicks, right? Which have an OB in them. Okay, so say. Uh, let me move these slightly this way and let me draw another candle here okay say that this is your OB right um, let me get one of these little ones across there we go so say this is your OB right but then you have a liquidity wick instead you can actually place the order at you can have entry one at the base of the wick which is sorry, which is here, or you can have 50% of this wick, so say it's rough, oh gosh, say 50% is roughly there, right, oh, why did, it, why did you get that, there we go, or you can have your entry at the 50% of the wick, okay, so this is where you can place your orders, either at the base or here, now if you do get a liquidity wick, it doesn't mean that you can't use the actual OB itself. You can still use an entry here or 50% should you wish. But in terms of refinement, you can also use this. Now, remember the more refined you go, the less probability you have of a trade triggering. So don't try not to over refine it. Um, you know, if you don't need to, say for example, if this gives you a five pip stop loss, right? From here to that wick, then use that, okay? So just so you are in the trade and the trade actually triggers. Okay, but again, it's up to you how big you want your max stop loss. For me, it's five pips. Okay, so that's the only thing. So in terms of when we show you uh, the two entry types, uh, in terms of risk entries and confirmation entries, this is where you're going to place your orders. You're going to place your order at either the open of the OB, the 50%, the open of the wick, um, being the base of this wick, sorry, or the 50% of the wick. That's literally all it is, where you're going to place your orders. 
In terms of stop loss size, it is down to you and what you feel comfortable as having your max stop loss. Try not to be a hero and try to go for like the smaller stop loss possible because you don't have to. For me, my minimum stop loss is two pips. Sometimes I do one pip, but it's very rare now. Uh, two pips is probably the safest one in terms of spread. Now, when you have a spread issue, generally for a sell, you should put your stop loss um, above the high of the OB and add your spread for a buy you should put it you can put it below the low but in terms of your entry just add your uh add whatever your spread is to the entry so say if you're looking for a buy right so this is for a sell i'm showing you here but say if you're looking for a buy that would be your entry one that would be entry two um this would be entry one and your entry two would be here right in this situation there we go so if you're looking for a buy, you probably should add a, a few, like a pip or so, or whatever your spread is to your entry, just to make sure you actually trigger, so spread doesn't let you down. Um, in terms of stop loss, you'll be fine, but for a sell, you do need to add a few pip or a pip or so to your stop loss um, to cover the spread. But that's the basic entry to um, where you'll place your orders. So the next two videos, they're gonna be, so the entry time is gonna be split into two parts. Okay, so we have risk entries and we have confirmation entries. Confirmation entries are the safest way to trade and the risk entries, are obviously risk entries for the name, the call out for a reason. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about risk entries to start off with, and then we're gonna talk about confirmation entries in the following video.